It is the 5th of October 1939. The German army is marching down Aleja Ujazdowski in Warsaw past the National Socialist dictator who had launched the Second World War after an alliance with his opposite number in Kremlin. For the population of Warsaw this was the beginning of a nightmare that would last five years and four months and take hundreds of thousands of lives of the population of the Polish capital. However, it was also a worrying time for a man who was about to take military command in occupied Poland, Johannes Blaskowitz. A religious man shocked by the behaviour and atrocities committed by the SS, German police and indeed the Wehrmacht, he would make numerous protests in his official capacity. In this video I shall look at his career and his efforts to stop the wave of national socialist crime in the occupied territories, as well of course as his post-war fate. Johannes Blaskowitz was born in Patiswalda on the 10th of July 1883. Patiswalda was a village located about 30 kilometers east of Königsberg in East Prussia. It's now in Russia. His father was Hermann Blaskowitz, a Protestant pastor whose ancestors originally came from what is today Slovenia. His mother was Marie Blaskowitz, née Kuhn. She died in 1886. It must have been quite difficult for his now single father to look after him and his three sisters until such time as he remarried in 1894. Being a pastor, it's probably from his father that Johannes Blaskowitz got his religious feelings. Blaskowitz attended elementary school in Walter Kelmen, that's in the Gumbinnen district, or I should say was in the Gumbinnen district because it's the day Olkovatka, and uh, then he went to a private school in Milunen in the Staluponen district, which is today Ilushino. He began his military career at the age of 10, spending three years as a cadet in Kirschlin, today Koszalin in Poland. Then he went for four more years at the main cadet institute in Gross Lichterfelde near Berlin. On the 2nd of March 1901, after graduating from high school at the age of 17, he joined the Prussian army. He was assigned to the von Grohlmann Infantry Regiment in Osterode in East Prussia, that is today Ostruda in Poland. This was to be his unit for the next 11 years, although as he was doing courses and worked as a trainer, he did not see much of it. Blaskowitz attended the Engers War School, graduated second best and was promoted to lieutenant on the 27th of January 1902. He took part in a course at the Military Gymnastics Institute in Berlin and then worked for a year and a half as assistant teacher at this institute. From 1908 to 1911 he was sent to the War Academy in Berlin where he had passed the interpreter's examination in French and was then deployed to Offenburg as a lieutenant in the 3rd Company of the 9th Baden Infantry Regiment No. 170. On the 1st of April 1914, he was transferred to the staff of the 3rd Baden, 111th Infantry Regiment, Markgraf Ludwig Wilhelm. Blaskowitz was a captain when the First World War began. He served in Lorraine and Flanders as well as in the frontline battles in Tyrol and the campaign against Serbia. From April 1916, he was sent to the Eastern Front and fought in the battles of Kovel and Riga. From there, he was sent back to the Western Front. During the war, Blaskowitz received many medals, which included both classes of the Iron Cross and the Knight's Cross of the Royal House of Hohenzollern with swords. After the end of the war, Blaskowitz initially returned to Offenburg. After a short time, he was transferred to the headquarters of the 10th Army Corps in Hanover. In the spring of 1919, Blaskowitz began his service as a general staff officer at the headquarters of Military District 5 in Stuttgart. 
These were difficult times for the army, with threats from both the extreme right and the extreme left at the same time. The German army was largely too small to deal with these threats. On the 13th of March 1920, a group around General Walter von Ludwitz, supported by Erich Ludendorff and with the political support of Wolfgang Kapp, attempted to overthrow the government. This brought Germany to the brink of civil war and forced members of the Reich government to flee Berlin. Most of the Putschists were active members of the German military, but others, such as Blaskowitz and his commanding officer, General Walter von Bergmann, remained loyal to the government, and the Kapp Putsch, as it was to be called, was defeated. Part of the reason for this defeat was a general strike, but once the Putsch was over, the very same far-left leaders now tried to grab power for themselves. Once more, Blaskowitz was involved in the suppressing of this uprising, this time with extreme violence, leading to the deaths of many of the workers. On the 1st of October 1924, he took over as commander of the 3rd Battalion of the 13th Württemberg Infantry Regiment in Ulm. Blaskowitz was promoted to Lieutenant Colonel there in 1926 and returned to Stuttgart in 1928, where he served as Chief of Staff of the 5th Division. After being promoted to Colonel on the 1st of October 1929, he was also then the State Commander in Baden until the 31st of January 1933. At the end of 1930, Blaskowitz was appointed commander of the 14th Baden Infantry Regiment, called the Seehasen, in Constance. He was promoted to Major General on the 1st of October 1932. On the 30th of January 1933, Hitler became Chancellor. What Blaskowitz thought of the National Socialists at this point is not recorded, but given his background, he would appear to have been an apolitical Prussian army officer. I would suspect also that he probably looked down his nose at some of these national socialists. His apolitical nature had been proven nearly 13 years earlier when he had been prepared to take on the enemies of the German government on both the left and the right. In any case, his career path continued to advance. On the 1st of February 1933, he was transferred to the Reichswehr Ministry in Berlin and was appointed Inspector of Weapons Schools. He was promoted Lieutenant General on the 1st December 1933. In 1935, he was appointed Commanding General of the Military District 2 in Stettin, today Stettin, and in 1936, he was promoted to General of the Infantry. In 1938, he became Commander-in-Chief of Army Group 3 in Dresden. He took part in the Wehrmacht's invasion of Austria, Operation Otto, and led his units in the occupation of the Sudetenland in October 1938 and the remaining part of the former Czechoslovakia in the spring of 1939. World War II began on the 1st of September 1939 with the invasion of Poland. Blaskowitz helped the operational planning of this invasion. Polish troops were forced back and by the 8th of September 1939 German forces were at Warsaw. However, 100 kilometers to the west, Blaskowitz's 8th Army advancing to the east was stretched between Wenchitsa and Wawicz and weakly secured from the north by only the 30th Infantry Division. This permitted a Polish counterattack which became the Battle of the Bazura, the name given from a river which runs through the area of the battlefield and is a tributary of the Vistula. The shock to the German 30th and 24th Infantry Divisions was such that on the first day they took 1,500 casualties and 3,000 German troops surrendered. The German forces were thrown back approximately 20 kilometers, and towns such as Wenchitsa and Piontek were liberated on the 8th of September and Ozorkub on the 9th of September. Although his army was advancing eastwards, Blaskowitz turned it around to attack in a northwesterly direction, something made much easier by having aerial superiority. 
On the 15th of September 1939, the Polish army was forced out of Sochachev, a town on the Bazura River, and by the 19th of September, the valiant counterattack had largely been defeated due to the lack of air support, being outnumbered in artillery and tanks, and a lack of supplies. Blaskowitz had played a key role in this battle and averted a potential defeat for the invaders. Nonetheless, Adolf Hitler was dissatisfied with Blaskowitz's leadership during a visit to the front. This suggests that the general may have said something to the Führer or somebody else passed on negative comments. Nonetheless, Blaskowitz was ordered to attack Warsaw. On the 28th of September 1939, he accepted the surrender of the Polish capital from General Tadeusz Kutsheba, which can be seen in this photograph. Blaskowitz has his back to the camera. At the end of hostilities, Blaskowitz was promoted by Hitler to General Oberst and was awarded the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross. At this stage, I need to explain something about the Wehrmacht's ranks. Oberst, in English, is Colonel, so therefore General Oberst could be translated as Colonel General, which would be a lower rank than that of Major General or Lieutenant General, for example. However, the General Oberst rank was the second highest general officer rank in the German Reichswehr and Wehrmacht, the Austro-Hungarian Army, the East German National People's Army, and their respective police services. The rank was equivalent approximately to a four-star general, but below that of a general field marshal. The rank was equivalent to General Admiral in the Kriegsmarine until 1945, or to a Flotten Admiral in the Volksmarine in East Germany until 1990. It was the highest ordinary military rank and the highest military rank awarded in peacetime. The higher rank of General Field Marshal was only awarded in wartime by the head of state. In general, a General Oberst had the same privileges as a General Field Marshal. In German, the word Ober means upper. So Oberst is the superlative form, that is to say uppermost. However, the rank of uppermost general does not sound very good, so I'll stick to colonel general, or maybe sometimes use the word four-star general, remembering that this was the highest peacetime rank in the German army. In Spain, General Franco called himself a generalissimo, which sounds quite ridiculous in some to isimo is the, the most general or something like this. But really, when I now think about it, the word General Oberst is rather similar to it. So maybe General Franco's idea was not as daft as it sounds. During the Nazi period, 36 army four-star generals were created, as well as 12 in the Luftwaffe, two in the Waffen-SS, and one in the police. Blaskowitz was the fourth in the Nazi period and the first in World War II. However, at the time he became a four-star general, two of the others, Ludwig Beck and Wilhelm Adam, were on the retired list, whilst Werner von Fritscher had been killed in action outside Warsaw on the 22nd of September 1939. After the French campaign, Hitler created ten four-star army generals on the 19th of July 1940. They were Friedrich Stolmann, Heinz Guderian, Franz Halder, Hermann Hort, Adolf Strauss, Nicholas von Falkenhorst, Friedrich Fromm, Kurt Haase, Erich Herpner, and Eugen Ritter von Schobert. And I shall be doing some videos on them in the future. Not all of them, just some of them. In this photograph, we can see him on the 2nd of October 1939 with General Gerd von Rundstedt, who is saluting whilst the German troops parade on the square in front of the opera in Warsaw. As a traditional soldier, Blaskowitz kept control on the men under his command and sought to fight what he might have termed a clean war. Maybe this was part of his Protestant religion. 
During the Polish campaign, he handed out death sentences to those who had committed crimes against the civilian population. These sentences were rescinded by Adolf Hitler at the beginning of October 1939 in a general amnesty for all German troops found guilty of war crimes during the campaign. On the 25th of October 1939, the military and civilian powers were separated in Poland so that the occupied areas were no longer under military rule. On the following day, Blaskowitz became Commander-in-Chief East, succeeding General von Rundstedt, and thus head of the German occupying army in Poland. This now led to his first conflicts with his superiors. In the autumn and winter of 1939-1940, Blaskowitz protested several times against crimes he heard of being committed in the occupied territory. In this time, thousands of people fell victim to the SS, police, Volksdeutsche Selbstschutz, the so-called self-defense organizations of ethnic Germans and others uh, belonging to the occupying power. His protest was not only fueled by moral outrage, but also by concerns of what this could do to the discipline of the troops, anger at the arrogance of the police forces and other pragmatic considerations. As early as the 27th of November 1939, he wrote to the Commander-in-Chief of the Army, Walter von Wauterschluss, The police have not performed any visible tasks of order, but only spread terror in the population. To what extent the police are able to come to terms with the fact that they inevitably hand their people over to the bloodlust cannot be judged by me, but it is certain that it represents an unbearable burden for the Wehrmacht since everything is done in field grey uniforms. The current state of affairs is moving towards development that will cause a source of military unrest and make it impossible to exploit the country for the benefit of the troops and the military economy. The security and tranquility of the country cannot be achieved with violent messages alone. It is in the interest of both the Wehrmacht and the civilian administration if tolerable order prevails in Poland. In reaction to Blaskowitz's memorandum of November 1939, Hitler dismissed the complaints as childish and pointed out that no war could be won with the methods of the Salvation Army. A copy of Blaskowitz's compilation of attacks and violations by the police and SS went from the OKW to Himmler, who sent a functionary from the main office of the SS court to the general government. Blaskowitz sent another report to von Brautisch on the 8th of December 1939. Lieutenant Colonel Helmut Grosskort was already a member of the anti-Nazi resistance. He presented this report a few days later to senior army officers in charge on the Western Front, including Erwin von Wittsleben and Gerd von Rundstedt. Grosskort attempted in this way to build up a network of senior army officers who were opposed to National Socialism. He had previously worked for Erwin von Witzleben and had already shown his desire to do something about the regime. When the first signs of a Polish insurgency became evident in the Świętokrzyski region already in the winter of 1939-1940, Blaskowitz once more took a stand in a memorandum of the 6th of February 1940. He prepared a list of 33 complaints against the SS, which included strip searches and rape of Jewish women, a whipping orgy in Nasielsk, north of Warsaw, affecting 1,600 Jews, and others. Here he emphasized the political damage caused by the actions of the SS and the police, which was heading to dissatisfaction amongst the civilian population in Poland. He wrote, The role played by the Wehrmacht which is forced to stand by and watch these crimes and whose reputation suffers an irreparable loss, especially amongst the Polish population, does not need to be pointed out again. The worst damage, however, that will accrue to the German national body from the current situation is the extreme brutalization and moral depravity that will spread like a plague among valuable German human material in a very short time. The attitude of the troops towards the SS and the police vacillates between disgust and hatred. Every soldier feels disgusted and repelled by these crimes committed in Poland by members of the Reich and its officials. They do not understand how such things can occur, especially as they seem to happen under his protection, so to speak, and can be done with impunity. 
The danger which has thus become apparent compels us to adopt a general position on the question of the treatment of the Polish people. It is absurd to slaughter a few thousand Jews and Poles, for in view of the mass population this would neither kill the Polish idea of the state nor eliminate the Jews. On the contrary, the manner of the slaughter does the most damage. In February 1940, General von Brautisch refused to pass the renewed complaints on to Hitler. Instead, Brautisch issued an order that asked for understanding of the politically motivated measures to secure German living space. Brautisch also invited Himmler to give a speech to the commanders in chief of the army groups and armies, which he did on the 13th of March 1940 in Koblenz. Blaskowitz was transferred to the Western Front in early May 1940. Bewundernd steht die Welt vor dem gewaltigen Sieg im Westen. In 39 Tagen wurde Frankreich zerschlagen. Deutschland weiß, dass dieser Sieg nur durch die geniale Führung der tapfersten Soldaten und durch eine hervorragende Organisation errungen worden ist. Blaskowitz participated in the first phase of the French campaign in the West as commander of the 9th Army. He was relieved of this command on the 3rd of June 1940 at Hitler's request and was then temporarily appointed military commander Northern France on the 9th of June 1940. As the military commander in Northern France, he told the civilian population in a published poster on the 20th of June 1940 that those who behave calmly and peacefully would have nothing to fear. However, he threatened the serious penalties for any damage to or removal of crops, supplies and facilities of any kind that are important for the war effort, the tearing down and damaging of German proclamations that had been posted would also be counted as sabotage. Court martial offences included any assistance to fleeing civilians to the unoccupied territory, any transmission of messages to persons or authorities outside the occupied territory to the detriment of the German Wehrmacht and the Reich, any dealings with prisoners of war, any insult to the German Wehrmacht and its commanders, and ganging up in the streets, distributing pamphlets, holding public meetings, and processions not previously authorized by a German commander, and anything else which might be deemed to be anti-German. He also warned against inducement to work cessation, malicious cessation of work, strikes and lockouts. A further point stipulated that the conversion of the French franc to the German mark would be at five pfennigs, and the use of different conversion ratios was punishable. Now, in my opinion, this exchange rate appears to be quite realistic and fair given the conditions at the time, although it's often said that this very much benefited the occupier. If anybody has evidence that it uh, that is true, then please do put it in the comments section below. Now, despite a wave of promotions after the fall of France, Blaskovich did not advance the field marshal. On the 19th of July 1940, a number of people jumped one rank over him to field marshal. These people were Walter von Brautisch, Wilhelm Keitel, Gerd von Rundstedt, Feodor von Bock, Wilhelm von Lieb, Wilhelm List, Gunther von Klüge, Erwin von Witzleben and Walter von Reichenau. Blaskowitz was the only one ignored, demonstrating what complaining about the regime's policies could do to one's career. And I think this is very important when we start looking at the crimes that were ignored by other generals. On the 26th of October 1940, Blaskowitz received the Supreme Command of the First Army in occupied France and was henceforth subordinate to the Commander in Chief West. An der französischen Mittelmeerküste. In den Morgenstunden des 11. November an der deutsch-französischen Demarkationslinie. 7 Uhr. Auf Befehl des Führers treten deutsche motorisierte Verbände den Marsch durch das unbesetzte Frankreich zur Mittelmeerküste an. Deutschland verantwortet damit den englisch-amerikanischen Überfall auf französisch Nordafrika und kommt der geplanten Feindlandung an der südfranzösischen Küste zuvor. 
on the 11th of November 1942, units of his army also occupied the previous free areas of southern France without encountering any resistance. The first three and a half years of the occupation of France passed relatively quietly. Certainly, this must have been the best post available for any German officer. Blaskowitz was awarded the German Cross in silver on the 30th of October 1943. In May 1944, Blaskowitz was given command of the newly formed Army Group G in southern France, which consisted of the 1st and 19th Armies. However, the easy days for the German Army in France were coming to an end with increased activity from the French resistance and Allied bombing missions. Blaskowitz fought them with all means available at the time and under international law. Ein Datum von weltgeschichtlicher Bedeutung. Unter dem Druck Moskaus haben Briten und Amerikaner die seit langem angekündigte und von uns erwartete Invasion begonnen. On the 6th of June 1944, Allied forces landed in Normandy and on the 15th of August 1944 in the south of France. Blaskowitz had no other option but to retreat, keeping his forces in as intact as possible. However, once more, the SS were out to sour relations with the local population. Amongst many other massacres, on the 10th of June 1944, an SS unit wiped out the population of Orodosio Glan. One week later, on the 17th of June 1944, in an order of the day, Blaskowitz clearly distanced himself from those SS formations of the 2nd SS Panzer Division Das Reich, which had committed the atrocity. However, he did not always condemn German units. When French officials complained about the actions of the SS, he recommended replying to them that it must inevitably happen that sometimes innocent people fall victim to the bullet. The Wehrmacht must and will defend itself against the partisans of the resistance with all the means at its disposal. On the 20th of July 1944, a bomb planted in Hitler's headquarters in Rastenburg in East Prussia failed to kill him. However, in many cities, the rebels attempted to gain control. The most success was in Paris, where the German patriots were able to round up the SS and arrest them. In this photograph, we can see Blaskowitz with Rommel and von Rundstedt in Paris in May 1944. After the failure of the July bomb plot, Blaskowitz sent a note which proclaimed loyalty to Hitler. It is not unreasonable to assume that he may have feared that he was suspected. After all, he had been very close to Lieutenant Colonel Helmut Grosskort and Erwin von Witzleben. Grosskort had been captured at Stalingrad and perhaps his role in the resistance was not yet known, but von Witzleben was to have been supreme commander of the Wehrmacht after Hitler's overthrow. Given his previous and public opposition to Nazi crimes and his contacts with people like Grosskort and von Witzleben, it is very surprising that he was not involved with the resistance. If he was, then he managed to cover his tracks very well. On the 21st of September 1944, he was again relieved of his command and transferred to the Führer Reserve. His successor was Hermann Balk. On the 28th of October 1944, Blaskowitz received the oak leaves to his Knight's Cross for his active leadership. On the 24th of December 1944, Blaskowitz was again given command of Army Group G on the southern wing of the Western Front. Three weeks later, he was replaced again, this time by Paul Hauser. Blaskowitz took over Army Group H in Holland in January 1945. Here, he successfully negotiated with the Allies about food supplies for the starving Dutch population, although this only mitigated the famine in the winter of 1944-1945. The famine killed around 18,000 Dutch people. Nonetheless, without his intervention and permission to allow in supplies from the United Kingdom and Sweden, many more Dutch citizens would have been killed. The agreement was that the Allies would supply food to the civilian population under German occupation if the aircraft were not fired upon. In this video, 
we can see supplies being dropped. Some aircraft returned from the Netherlands with bomb damage uh, from ground fire. This presumably was caused by the Germans, either unaware of the agreement or may have sought to prevent it. On the 6th of April 1945, he gave up his command and took over the command of the 25th Army at the same time as being Commander-in-Chief of Fortress Holland. On the 5th of May 1945, he surrendered with the remnants of the 25th Army at the Hotel de Vereld in Wangeneringen to the British and Canadians under General Charles Falk. From 1945... To 1948, Blaskowitz was imprisoned in Dachau, Allendorf near Marburg and finally in Nuremberg. Poland, Czechoslovakia and the Netherlands requested his extradition whilst the United States wanted to put him up on trial for war crimes. In time, the Netherlands withdrew its request whilst the crimes in Czechoslovakia clearly took place long after he'd left. After the transfer to Dachau on the 30th of April 1946, Poland had Blaskowitz entered as number eight on the United Nations War Crimes Commission's wanted list for murder, but he was not extradited to Poland. Blaskowitz was accused of abusing and murdering Polish prisoners of war. However, Blaskowitz is not mentioned in various other historical records documenting Polish charges against accused German individuals. Blaskowitz was first considered as a potential defendant by Telford Taylor in late 1947 in connection with the British military court in Wuppertal prison. In the Nuremberg trials of the main Nazi war criminals before the International Military Tribunal, Taylor initially served as assistant to the American chief prosecutor Robert H. Jackson. In 1946, he was appointed Brigadier General, took over Jackson's post in October of that year, and now, as Chief Prosecutor, indicted a number of accused Nazi war criminals in follow-up trials before the American Military Tribunal in Nuremberg. Blaskowitz was accused of giving the commando order to the 80th Corps on the 18th of October 1942, the very same day as it was issued by Hitler. With the commando order, the Nazi leader instructed that members of Allied commandos be killed immediately or handed over to the security service of the Reichsführer SS, which, as far as the victims were concerned, uh, being handed over to the, well, Sicherheitsdienst, uh, also meant death. The commando order constituted a violation of the Hague Convention on Land Warfare and the Geneva Convention on the Treatment of Prisoners of War of 1929 and was cited by the prosecutor in the Nuremberg trials of the major war criminals as evidence of war crimes committed. On the 7th of July 1944, 31 British paratroopers were murdered near Poitiers. This murder had been committed by formations of the 80th Corps under General Kurt Gallenkamp. Blaskowitz was the then Commander-in-Chief of Army Group G, to which the 80th Corps belonged. This murder was added to his charge sheet. He was also accused of using prisoners of war on the 2nd of February 1945 to build fortifications. Finally, he was also accused of passing on a deportation order that had been issued between the 1st and 10th of August 1944. Blaskowicz was eventually charged with crimes against peace, war crimes in Poland and France, crimes against humanity and waging war of aggression due to his role in the occupation of the state and land, the invasion of Poland and the attack on France. Eventually, Blaskowicz was charged with participating in a common plan or conspiracy because of his membership of the general staff. Indictments in the High Command trial were handed out on the 28th of November 1947 and the trial lasted until the 28th of October 1948. Blaskowicz pleaded not guilty. Exculpatory documents were not available to the defence at the time and he assessed his situation pessimistically. He did not see the trial out. On the 5th of February 1948, he threw himself out of the Palais of Justice in Nuremberg to his death. As it happened, he probably would have been acquitted anyway, 
even those generals are charged alongside him with monstrous crimes more or less got away with it. The Nuremberg judges appear to have seen Blaskovitz as a positive example of how Wehrmacht officers could have behaved if they had wanted to. The wife and daughter of Blaskovitz moved in with Johannes Kirpke in Bommelsen, a village around 60 kilometers to the north of Hanover. Johannes Kirpke had been the stable boy of Blaskovitz during World War I. As the family lands of the Blaskovitz family were now in Soviet-occupied East Prussia, it is for this reason that the grave of Johannes Blaskovitz is in the cemetery of the parish of Bommelsen. In conclusion, opinions differ. Holocaust historian Raoul Hilberg wrote that Blaskovitz was by no means outraged at the idea of ethnic cleansing. What did upset him was the amateurish way in which the SS tried to deal with it. As you might have seen in my video on Trent Park, it was the manner of committing murders openly rather than the fact that they were being committed which bothered some generals. Could Blaskovitz be put in this group? Indeed, Blaskovitz, in his notes of February 1940, defined Poles and Jews as the arch enemies of the East. Does this mean that he accepted this Nazi stereotype, or was he using the language that might be appreciated by the recipients of his memo, knowing that appeals to humanity would have no effect? Others have suggested that Blaskovitz clearly failed to recognise that it was the regime itself which was criminal, and not just the lesser functionaries who committed the crimes. As far as Blaskowitz was concerned, the Wehrmacht's passivity could have in the long run serious repercussions on soldiers and German society as a whole. Maybe these fears could date back to March 1920 when he helped put down the Ruhr Rebellion which had happened after the Kapputsch and hundreds of German workers were massacred by the German army, Freikorps and other right-wing militias. And what about his contacts, or lack of them, with the German resistance? As far as they're concerned, it's unlikely that we will ever find out now what he knew of the July 1944 bomb plot, if indeed he knew anything. Blaskowitz spent the first few months of the occupation in Poland and thus saw only the beginning of the terror. However, he did understand that this very terror would work against the occupiers. It turned what might have been passive civilians into fighting partisans, and many German troops lost their lives as a result. Furthermore, the destruction of economically productive people would only have damaged the German war effort. Had he been listened to, then the results might have been much more benign. But being benign was not part of the National Socialist mindset. Had it been, then there would have been no war and no Hitler in the first place. Blaskowitz, in my opinion, attempted to mitigate the effects of the criminal regime to the best of his ability. And in this, he failed. So, thank you very much for listening to this. I shall be doing more German generals. I am, I'm particularly interested in the German resistance and have prepared um, one or two videos on lesser known characters within the resistance. And uh, that, that will be published in the future sometime. I upload every Friday at 20 hundred hours, uh, my time, Central European time, 7 o'clock in the UK and all sorts of times in other places. And I also upload uh, at other times other than this. Occasionally also do live broadcasts in which I discuss something which is happening in the news, which is related to history. So we can have a look at how the past might affect the future. If you want to know when I'm uploading, then please subscribe and you'll get a message. And you'll certainly get a message if you ring the bell as well. All the best from me. I'm currently in Poland, where I have done this video from.